Joining session three of uh, a four-part series from the Center of Sacred Music on wedding traditions and customs in various world religions and also other offshoot kind of things. Uh, before we get started with the main attraction, just to review last year, this is old school PowerPoint right here. Uh, in 1842, Mendelssohn wrote this lovely little thing of da 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 and in 1850, Wagner wrote an opera, oh, and this was from Incidental Music to a Midsummer Night's Dream, the Shakespeare play. Uh, Wagner in 1850 wrote an opera, Lohengrin, and in it was a little tune, bum, bum, ba, bum, 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 ever heard that? The crowd, of course. Uh, in 1858, a lovely young couple in England, Vic and Fred, also known as Princess Victoria, and Prince Frederick uh, from Prussia got married. And he had introduced her to the wonderful world of opera and incidental music. Now, she was the daughter of Queen Victoria, but in England it just wasn't quite the thing yet. And so she fell in love with those particular pieces. And since they mentioned the words bridal and wedding, she thought, it will all work beautifully for our wedding. And since her mother was the head of the Church of England, it worked very well for them. Normal people were never allowed to do state, uh, secular music in a church service until that time. So they were allowed to do that. And from then forward, it blossomed and bloomed. And now you just hear that, here comes the bride, there goes the bride, all over the place. Unless you're Catholic, Roman Catholics still hold the line to that. Uh, but that's what we learned last time. This time we're thinking that just before we start about odd things that people sing in modern times. As an organist, I've had many fine requests. For instance, one of my favorites, the desire to sing Nobody Does It Better from Octopussy. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does it better, makes me feel sad for the rest. Probably not what you want to do with your grandmother's <laughs> and the uh, congregation. Another favorite, particularly from guys over the age of 35 or 40, Desperado. Desperado, <laughs> why don't you let someone love you? My uh, office mate, Billy Yeoman, shares that in a recent wedding at her church, the couple wanted to preset our recess to even a player needs a lover. <laughs> so <laughs> these are top classics from wedding music. Now we're going to learn some of the traditions. Dr. Linda Ferguson is going to begin looking <coughs> at the custom of the honor me beauty pageant, which is a phrase coined by a good friend who was a Roman Catholic priest and he said he got sick of seeing the brides get all the attention. You know, the bride coming in by herself, uh, the, all the expense on the bride. And so he instituted a new rule that couples would enter the church together. Uh, and that made him the great enemy of mothers. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Linda will begin with the Honor Me Beauty pageant. And then Dr. Greg Monson will give us a look at uh, the view of marriage in the Christian tradition. Would you join me in welcoming Miss Linda? I'll begin with an artifact. This is a marriage certificate that is dated March 14, 1906. It's written in very pretty handwriting. Uh, we would call it calligraphy now. Back then, it was just pretty handwriting, and anyone could do it. Uh, this was made suitable for framing, and it has been framed probably since 1906. Uh, it was meant to last for a long time, as was the marriage that it certified for my grandparents. They were married for 63 years. They had one son. On October 10th, 1942, my mother wore this simple dress that's hanging from the screen, and she married their son, my father. This was her simple wedding ring, no engagement ring, no diamond encrusting, etc. This was his ring, and it doesn't look like a traditional wedding ring, but I guess it's the one he wanted. They were married for 45 years. They had one daughter. On July 23rd, or 21st, 1973, I wore that fetching lace number, <laughs> uh, and for which my mother and father paid $79. I wore the 
beekeeper lives. <laughs> that costs 110. <laughs> I have no idea how much my parents spent for my wedding when I married a boy in, in uh, college. We were married 11 months. We had no children. All of my friends' weddings that summer were identical. We were all married in Middletown, Pennsylvania. It doesn't get much more average than that. <laughs> same churches, same reception halls, same photographers, same wedding music, same florists, same bands at our receptions, and same Sauterne and, and Chablis wedding wine fountains <laughs> on the tables. We all went to the same wedding five times that summer. <laughs> but now we're going to talk about the 2013 wedding. Sandy calls it the Honor Me Beauty Pageant. She said I had to use that title, so there it is. We're done with it. Um, I call it Wedded Blitz. The definition, I teach marketing, for those of you that don't know me, and the definition that the concise dictionary uses for the word blitz is a tactic designed to create psychological shock and result in disorganization in enemy forces through the use of surprise, speed, and superiority in material and firepower. This is what marketers do. In her book, Cinderella Dreams, the, uh, it's called The Allure of the Lavish Wedding, author Cecile Oatness used the term binge to describe the lavish wedding. It's defined by anthropologist William uh, Richard Wilk as consumption of large quantities of goods in a very short period of time. Again, a wedding. Pageant, blitz, binge, there are a few other ways to look at weddings. Dr. Watson will look at the ceremony, which I leave in his hands completely. Another is to look at weddings as a once in a lifetime experience, something every girl dreams of, some, something every family thinks about and plans for. However, in 2011, the marriage rate, and remember these numbers, was 6.8 marriages per 1,000 people, set against a divorce and annulment rate of 3.6 per 1,000. Interestingly, our repository for our national marriage and divorce statistics, does anybody know who it is who keeps those figures? Census. Uh, not quite. Census, it, it, some of it is registered with the census, but the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> this begs the question, which is the more public health risk? Is it marriage or divorce? <laughs> now, we know it's divorce, honestly. We're laughing, but we know it's divorce because people who are married do live longer than those who are single. Lizzie Aker of KQED Public Media cites five reasons why weddings are considered performance art. We don't often think of them that way, but here we are you know, in the fine arts building. Think about it. First, they create an immersive environment. Second, there are specific people who perform specific roles and sort of act the whole thing out. They put on the show. Third, everyone is in costume, including the guests. Fourth, there are prescribed actions in which everyone participates. And finally, they actually make you feel some strong emotions. So performance art is another possibility. Some see weddings as a means of transcendence from the everyday, from the ordinary. The queen for a day model. Most of you are too young to remember a TV show called Queen for a Day. Then there's the fairy tale version and the Cinderella story. I add to all of these worthy perspectives a look at the wedding industry as opposed to the wedding itself. It's also known as the marital industrial complex. This is a headline on The Onion that described Rebecca Mead's 2007 book, One Perfect Day, The Selling of the American Wedding. So let's go to the numbers. The number of weddings has risen and peaked in 2000, um, let's see, risen and, oops, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong slide. Uh, the weddings have hovered around between 2 and 2.5 million weddings a year since 1968. Now this is according to the census and of course the CDC. <laughs> the next one 
we see that weddings peaked around 2007 and then started to trail off, and now we're seeing them ascend as far as the costs of weddings were concerned. Now, they went all the way back to 1945, just a couple years after my parents' wedding. And as I said, I have no idea how much their wedding cost, but that, that source is from the August Saturday Evening Post. And so instead of the government keeping statistics like that that were available, uh, some of the others are from the Christian Science Monitor. But you see it peak at about uh, $28,000. We're, we're a little lower than that now. According to the wedding wire, they paid the industry, the total industry, at about $100 billion. That is, is pretty formidable. The um, Library of Congress Business References says that this number may be really underrepresenting the whole industry because a lot of these people who are photographers, caterers, etc., are very local. And so they're probably not measured uh, as, as discreetly as some others. Also, a lot of them may also work part time, they also work for different kinds of clients, so they don't have specific wedding practices.